Hello and welcome. I'm your host, author Ryan M. Oliver, and this is the Mighty Books Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Mighty Books Podcast. Today with me, I have Junon Macias. Junon has a background in health sciences, having graduated with a BA in science and nutrition and a BA in science in human kinetics. She also completed a dental assistant certificate and a postgraduate certificate in clinical trial research. Furthermore, she studied the three levels of the therapeutic touch healing modality and is an advanced meditator. Since 2007, she has been writing about sexual health and relationships. Junon is the author of three published books. Junon, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well, and you? Good, good. Well, welcome. And we're here to talk about your book today. Which book are we talking about today? Uh, Theta Waves Meditation. Theta Waves Meditation. And what is Theta Waves Meditation about? It is about a technique that I've uh, created because um, I've been meditating for the past 30 years. So I have more than 10,000 hours of meditation practice. What I've discovered over time is that for most people, it is challenging to meditate. And uh, people rarely talk about that. People say, well, I've got a meditation app and, you know, there's calm, there's headspace, and I'm just going to sit there and, you know, focus on my mantra or whatever it is or sound. And they say, well, everybody can do it. But um, what sort of like prompt me to, you know, really look into this area is the fact that in 2009, near 2009, my meditation uh, center bought an EG machine to look into people's brains when they are uh, meditating. So in other words, the three three states, in other words, there one was uh, sitting eyes open, sitting eyes closed, and sitting eyes closed when uh, they're meditating. What surprised me is that I had linked a number of of hours of meditation with the ability to get into a meditative state. I thought, you know, well, if you've been meditating for, let's say, for 20 years, Mm -hmm. then you should be a better meditator than someone who just started. Turns out it's not true. Oh. (laughs) I mean, that is like, I I mean, certain things in life we sort of take, uh, um, you know, we assume certain uh, aspects or data, but you have to go and test in real life. So... What happened is that there was uh, the meditation teacher who had been meditating for 35 years at that time, and there was a novice meditator who's been, who had been meditating for maybe three weeks. And we looked at their brain waves in the three states, in the three conditions. And the, the meditation student outperformed greatly the meditation teacher. Then I realized that because there were uh, we, we we cycled, so we put all the, the meditation people there, people, the meditators, and we looked at their brain waves. And I realized there was no relationship between how many hours of meditation practice and what we saw in the EEG. So huh. what I realized is that what determines your ability to meditate has to do with how your brain is wired from birth. That will override. It's like saying to someone, if you train really well, you're going to, you know, match Hussein Bolt. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, and he's, it, just, he's just a stellar athlete. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do you get my point? So in other words, yes, he had to train oh, know, absolutely. hard for many years. But most of it is genetics. Yeah. Most of it has to do with how you're born, plus the work, plus the discipline and so forth that can get you there obviously you need to have like the proper team around you to, to actually uh basically show or reach your your, your maximum potential yeah. so when it comes to meditation what people don't say and and that's why most people uh, struggle is that people who do really well who are easy can easily meditate are first of all right brain dominant okay and naturally have slow brain waves, slow coherent brain waves. So when talking about uh, meditation, we're looking at the prefrontal lobes. So if I, that's where they put the, the uh, electrodes to actually see it when you did the MEGs is that we looked at how slow the brain waves are and whether the right and left are actually are coherent. So when we meditate, essentially what people are doing in, uh, unconsciously is trying to get their brain waves to slow down and to have more of a coherent brain 
and trying to become more right brain dominant. Oh, okay. So that's why if you, if you look at the sages in, in, in history, they were all right brain dominant right. and also had slow coherent brain waves. So okay. if you and people think that uh, oh if someone is let's say if you're a man then you are you know more uh, sort of like left brain dominant compared to a woman no because if you look at uh, all the uh, like sages or saints in history they all had a feminine energy yeah so if you compare let's say the Dalai Lama let's, I'm quick an ex- extreme example the Dalai Lama to Howard Schwarzenegger Howard Schwarzenegger is left brain dominant <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Donald Trump is left brain dominant because a person who's right brain dominant is more empath- empathic. Oh, okay, they're, they're, okay. They're, there's, a, there's a gentleness to them. They're the type of people who come from the heart. They're gentler, they're softer. And yeah. when you meditate, what you're trying to do is actually becoming more right brain dominant. Oh, okay. You're not trying okay. to become more left brain dominant <laughs> when you're trying to meditate. That's yeah. why, you know, there was a person who from birth is like that. It, it's like you know, it's, it's, you know, someone who's born with wings, yeah. they can easily fly. If you don't have wings and you have to start to grow those wings, you're you all in the plane or a yeah, glider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be in a plane to actually pull it off. So, so these are uh, concepts or ideas that that are rarely discussed. And if you look at the general population, if you go online, you say, well, uh, consciously, when someone has their eyes open, uh, what is their dominant brain waves? They're going to see a beta. Okay. You go to any, they'll say it's a beta brain dominance. Why do you say that is because at least 85% of the population have a beta brainwave dominance. And you, to get into meditation, you have to go down to alpha or better yet theta to pull it off. Interesting. So it's not so much when you are eyes closed and trying to meditate. When your eye, eyes open, what is your dominant brain waves? This will de- determine whether it's easy or hard for you to meditate. Interesting. So, so what are what are what are theta waves? Like, I've never even heard of theta waves. Okay. What are theta waves? So this theta is all new to me. I'm I'm just lear- I'm learning. I'm learning so, now. So, so b- beta is uh, let's say if you lo- look at the dominant brain because we have all those different brain waves. We have theta. We have alpha. We have if you go from like faster to slower. So mm-hmm. we have like, even gamma. Gamma is even like uh, faster than than even uh, beta. Oh, okay. So you have you have gamma. You have beta. You have alpha and then you go down to theta and then delta is when we sound asleep so as you go down it's the brains are slower and slower so when you are literally trying to fall asleep at night you your brain waves slow down and gradually you fall asleep and then you know you might be dreaming or you might not you know, oh, okay. you know uh remember that there is obviously some background brain waves in yeah. other words if you don't or like you're not like purely in alpha you're not purely in beta there's a, a mixture so we yeah. talk about what the, the dominant one. So if let's say we look at the cycles per second, so hertz. Yes. So if you, I mean, I'm just going to talk about the three main ones because I don't want to confuse people. So beta, <laughs> beta <appreciate> is, <laughs> <laughs> beta is around like anyways between like twelve to usually forty cycles per second. So how many times you see there's a, a sine wave? How many times you see this these brain waves per in, within a, a period of one second? So that's yeah. why it goes like up and down like that. So within a second, how yep. many times it goes up and down? Yep. So that's, let's say, uh, uh, we're talking about beta. Uh, alpha is uh, between 11 cycles per second down to about like, let's say, uh, it's like eight cycles per second. Okay. So that's around that when it comes to alpha. And most people, when they, they meditate, they're trying to get down to alpha. So they, they're looking like from beta, slowing it down to alpha to get into a meditative state. Then you have theta. Theta is even slower than alpha. So it's between four cycles per second up to maybe seven. Okay. So why I called this meditation technique theta brain theta waves meditation is because it brings the person's brain waves or they they are exposed to a frequency of theta so between four to seven cycles per second so it okay. slows down their brain waves there now it is it is a new technology i know like most people have not heard of that so what happens about i started doing energy healings about 10 years ago i started in 2012 and what i've realized is that people would tell me about 95 percent of the time that their breathing weight would change 
And when something happens 95% of the time, you know it's not by accident. Oh, no. S- something went on. And, and they would spontaneously say it. So yeah. I was not looking for it. They're like, oh, what, what have you done there? Yeah, it's a physiological then, response. Yeah. Yes. And, and this is something that uh, is where we talked about when it comes to um, the, the interaction between, let's say, you have, we probably have heard of Reiki, of, you know, um, energy metallic Reiki. Re- oh, Reiki? That? Yeah, Reiki. Have you heard of Reiki? I've heard of, but not familiar with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so what happens is that Reiki and any type of, you know, energy healing modality has to do with you have a healer that influences the physiology of another person. This happens automatically. Like if I put two people together, they, their physiology will start synchronizing. Their brain waves, their, their resting breathing rate, their blood pressure will yeah. start synchronizing. Uh, people sometimes will, t- especially if some, someone is right brain dominant or, or more feminine energy, is that they are more sensitive to that. They, they can perceive it. Sometimes people will say, you know what, I'm with this person. I don't feel good. I don't know why. The person has not said the wrong thing or I yeah. just don't feel good. I feel stressed. I feel tense. Uh, I don't feel good being around this. And it will be difficult to fall asleep in the same bed with a person, with that person. Yeah. So, what I realize well, over time is that when a person does a healing, they just purposely sort of like influence a person's um, another person's uh, physiology. Sure. So you'll see that there's a synchronization that happens. Yeah. Well, so, it's kind of kind of sounds like like mother and child, like when they their heartbeats will synchronize. Yeah. It, I didn't realize that you could do that as an adult, but it makes sense because what you're describing, I've I've experienced with other people, and I've kind of put it to it sounds weird, but like. Um, if you've ever had a dog before and you have someone come over and they just love this person that comes over yeah. and you're like, Oh good. <laughs> and then I've had people come over and the dog has not been so friendly because yes. it's like something like it can just sense that this person is not, not necessarily in the right mindset or good, good hearts necessarily. Um, and I felt like that for some people I've met through my life. It's like, I feel like I want to attack him. Like, I don't like this person. Like, why yeah, is this? It, yeah. It, it, it's I don't so, feel sometimes and so what is interesting is that it's like uh, when we, let's say, look at a, at a relationship, you have to look at that that uh, combination of these two. Like uh, one person will behave very differently with different people. Yeah. And and so in other words, if you ask someone, okay, how is, I don't know, John? One person, well, oh, he's wonderful. He's calm. I feel relaxed with him. So, oh, my God, this person. If you ask another person who, who doesn't really is off is the, the frequencies doesn't doesn't match well they say oh no, this person has a you know anger management issue they, they attack me all the time they, it's like but if you were to look at their physiology how john is reacting to let's say Anne, he's reacting very differently to susan because yeah. their physiology are, are not well synchronized so as the same person may react very differently behave very differently depending on who they are interacting with and it has nothing to do with intelligence or ethnicity whether male or female or even the age so you'll see that uh it it has to do with is are we on the same wavelength you know people say are we on the same way people think it's just a a figure of speech it's literally that it's literally on the same wavelength yes (laughs) it's not you know you're just not imagining it in other words or even uh, the white coat syndrome you know you go to a doctor and yeah. they're like, and, and I've had that where my normal blood pressure is below 120 systolic, but then I go there uh-huh. and my blood pressure is like reaches 150. Yeah. And the, the part is, especially if someone is very sensitive to subtle energy, is that the person doesn't have to be in the room. If let's say, uh, and I've talked to other people who also do energy healer or sensitive like that, is that. If a person has, let's say, been in a room for many hours or, you know, reside there, you don't have, the person doesn't have to be there for you to pick up the vibration. Yeah. You can go into that person's place and you can know who they are just by the frequency they left behind. Interesting. Interesting. So in other words, you know, like people go to like holy places where mm-hmm. a saint has died or something of sort or, you know, the, the remains. Yeah. Same thing. I remember going to uh, Montreal, uh, Brother Andre, his remains are there. Okay. And I thought to myself, will I be able to feel? Because he died like that was in 2016. I went there in Montreal, and he died in the 1930s. So from oh, the wow. 1930s all the way to 2016, will I feel something? He's been there for a while. Yeah. Yes, it was there. 
I could oh, still okay. because his remains were there. I could still feel the energy coming out of the of the the, the, the coffin. You know that okay. they they've had there the remains. So in other words, who you are is the your frequency. So and if I and you can record it just like recording your voice right now yeah. as a recording, you are recording my frequency as well. Interesting. A person when people are listening on a conscious or subconscious level, what they are picking up on is who you are in terms of your frequency. If I'm, huh. I, I I record that it's it's silent, I can take that and uh, it's, it, there is a, a document that's, that actually has done that where you can recreate DNA based on your frequency. So I can that's recreate at, at, at a 98% accuracy who you were based on mm -hmm. the vibration because it's not, it's it's information. Yeah. So so with that frequency, you will have a particular, um, let's say, a level of, let's say, awareness. Uh, you're you're going to have a particular uh, a blood pressure, uh, even in terms of your glucose level, your sleep pattern. Uh, I I will know. It's true. Your your values, your morals are all in your frequency. It's your wow. it's who you are. So if it's I know someone's frequency, I don't need to know anything else. That that is the essence of who they are. Yeah, almost like and, a uh, like a fingerprint almost. Yes, or like yes, a, it you, is. You, you leave some kind of a mark behind. Uh, yes. When you walk into a room. Actually, what's interesting is if you look up, I, I want to say, I can't remember what area or field of science this is, but when you are, when you walk into a room and then you leave, there's actually parts of you that are left over, like particles of you microscopic that you can't see obviously okay hair skin cell not not that it's other essence of you too that's actually left behind and yes it fades away but there are parts that's still there i cannot for the life of me remember what science that was yeah but it it sounds very similar to what we're talking about right now yes I don't know what just popped in my brain but anyway it was just it was just kind of a interesting interesting note there now what inspired you to say i'm going to write a book about this because I realize the importance of meditation for overall health because yeah. it's linked to resting breathing rate. So I think people really should explore that it, because it starts with having a healthy brain. I know that sounds like evident, but <laughs> healthy brain is important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like sure. So, so what happens is that if a person has fast, incoherent brain waves it influences their resting breathing rate. And how I discovered that is that over time when I was doing and healing, people will say their breathing would change and the, their resting rate would, would be corrected. So most people hyperventilate because they're stressed. So you will see the average person breathe between 12 and 20 times a minute. But for optimal health, no one should be breathing more than 12 times a minute. Hmm. So in other words, we're way <laughs> overshooting like you couldn't believe. And what I've realized is that when I would be do, doing a healing is that their, their resting rate would be corrected, but it's, there was not something predictable. One person might go, I remember like the one that I saw that was really a dramatic change. She was breathing like 30 times a minute and she had cancer, obviously. Mm. Um, in that, that case, you, you know, it has an impact. Sure. If you're, uh, okay. So she had cancer. I think she had lung cancer, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And so her breathing, she was breathing three, 30 times a minute. And after I did the uh, it was healing, and you can do it again over video, like you don't have to be there. You really oh, don't. Yeah. yeah, because it's a frequency. As I'm talking to you, hear me, and we're you're like a uh, different province. <laughs> so <laughs> her breathing went down to 10 times a minute after 10 minutes cool. on its own. Yeah, like I'm talking like dramatic. So in other words, what I, what I realized is that, that 10 times a minute, this is an optimal resting breathing rate. Yeah. So if you're breathing 30 times a minute, but you should be breathing 10 times a minute, it will have an impact on your whole body. Yeah. So what happens is that most chronic illnesses are linked to hyperventilation. If you hyperventilate, it means that, it, first of all, as the breathing rate increases, the, uh, the volume of the air is bigger. So a person who breathes, let's say, 20 times a minute, they're not breathing twice as much as someone who's breathing 10 times a minute. They're breathing way over because each breath is bigger. Yeah. They're, they're not, they're not doing like, they're like, it's like they're running like, you know, like high speed, you know, they're doing a sprint. That's how big the, the breath are. You can actually sometimes hear them over the phone. Have you ever had a situation where you can actually hear someone breathe? Oh yeah. 
that's when you know they're hyperventilating. You should never hear someone breathe. You should uh -huh. never, even if you're like leaning close to them, you should not be able to hear to hear their breathe. Sure. So, so what happens is that um, the 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 fact that they're not breathing properly, the when a person breathes fast like that, they are do doing chest breathing, so it doesn't go all the way down to the, 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 the to the lungs, and you need time for gas exchange. So if you're breathing fast, it just like it goes right here. It doesn't go down to the to, to the, the lungs, the lower aspect, and and your lungs are bigger at at the bottom more than the top. That's where the gas aging takes takes place. Yeah, huge and <laughs> and oh yeah, and what happens is that you need also carbon dioxide for uh, gas exchange. So probably uh, some people may have heard of the Bohr effect. So how your body knows to deliver more oxygen to epithelial tissue, it has to do with how much carbon dioxide there is in, in that, that cell. Oh, okay. So if you're breathing big, fast breaths, you're expelling too much carbon dioxide. So what happens is that if you look at the person's blood, it is saturated with oxygen, yeah. but the oxygen doesn't get delivered to the tissue because you have expelled too much of a carbon dioxide. You have a, a blood where the, the 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 red blood cells circulate, but the the oxygen is not being delivered to the tissue. Yeah. Okay. So that that's that's what happens when a person hyperventilates. And the other aspect also is that it it's very much linked to how long you're going to live. If I want to know how long you're going to live, I just have to ask you what is your resting breathing rate. Yeah. Will overpower everything else. Yeah. Will overpower nutrition, exercise. Because breathing is not optional. No, that's not. Not really. No. So I say, well, you know what? I, I'm just going to not breathe for the next year or so. Yeah, I'm going to kick that nasty oxygen habit I've had for, for my whole entire life. Well, it yeah, it's it silly. Well, so so it sounds like that, like the if your breathing rate is higher than normal, it's actually putting legitimate stress on your body. Yes. So yeah. so people, people uh, if you look at... Um, the not only how long a person lives, but the quality of their lives is that it's very much linked to how well oxygenated you are. Mm -hmm. And well how well oxygen you are links to your resting breathing rate. Yeah. And your resting breathing rate is determined by how fast and current your brain waves are. So you have fast and current brain waves. And as I accumulate data, I realize it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if let's say a person after I corrected their resting rate because most people hyperventilate, like easily ninety five percent people are stressed, chronic sure. stress. Yes. If I correct their resting rate, let's say if the person after correction reads twelve times a minute, it means that their dominant brain waves is twelve cycles per second. Okay, okay, okay. It's a one to one ratio, so I know this person has a beta brain dominance. This is okay. their normal one after correction. All right. And because I, I didn't like what's the reason? It's not something that I uh, actively uh, wanted to investigate. It's just like when something someone keeps on keeping on you telling the same thing over and over and at some point you wait a minute. And I realized that's what it is. In other words, your brain, like your brain is determining your resting breathing rate. Yeah, your brain does a lot of work. You get your my point? And, and, and I, I don't know exactly which center, but what I know is that whenever a, a person will give me their resting breathing rate, I could always tell if the person is more like most people or mm -hmm. they're, uh, you know, pro probably you've heard of personality types. If someone is an intuitive versus a sensor. Yes. Have you heard? Okay. So an intuitive is someone whose brain waves are slower than the average person. Yeah. So this person is, is naturally in a meditative state compared yeah. to a sensor. So yeah. that, and I realized that it's, it's only because I could predict, like, if someone tells me their resting breathing rate is like the correct one is 12 times a minute and they're like, let's say um, left brain dominant, I can tell you your personality type. I, I can describe you at a 90% accuracy what you're going to do long term. Yes, because it's, it's, it's not, you know, people say, no, you're not that unique. In any field, like yeah. for example, it, it, whatever you, you do a job, whatever, there's always a pattern. You can tell me at 80% 80, 80 accuracy what's going to happen. Would that be correct? Like you have children. You, you can tell me at 80% accuracy what they're going to do in a particular situation. Why? Yep. <laughs> because there are patterns. Things are not random in nature. Nature no, is. There's a lot of patterns. And like, we're really it, good at picking those up too. Yeah. In other words, if it's there's there's organization, there's structure there. People will say, oh, no, it, 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 at random. No, no, random is because you've not like gather enough data to see there's a pattern. 
even yeah, in randomness. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, we're, we're really good at identifying patterns. We're also good at identifying false patterns too, but that's a different, that's a different animal altogether. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but the, thing, the thing is that I realized it was not by accident that people, uh, their uh, um, resume was being corrected. Yeah. It's not by accident that people uh, hyperventilate. Uh, everything is, that, and also it's not surprising people have a difficult time meditating because they have a bit tap brain dominance. And that that's that's if let's say they're they're not stressed. Now you add stress to it. The average human being, if if you go online and let's say you look at on PubMed, you say, well, what is the average person's resting breathing? Let's say like you put resting breathing rate. They're gonna say it's about fifteen breaths per minute. Okay. Fifteen breaths per minute is hyperventilation. No way. I'm that not kidding. No, wow. <laughs> you know, I was thinking so much higher, but that's I, but it makes sense when you when you lay it out though. Yeah, in other words, and, and you, people can check the book by uh, James Nestor. It came out in 2020. Okay. Um, a Breath, the New Science of a Lost Art. It will blow you away. Like everything that I discovered, like empirically, he laid it out. And he said, if I want to know how long you live, I just have to look at your breathing. Wow. I just, I don't need to know. And people might say, well, is it hereditary? No, it's not. Because if you take the, uh, like, you know, in a family, that's why most families have conflict because you have people who are, their brains are different. Oh yeah. They're yeah. not, they're not seeing the same thing. They don't understand. And, and it has nothing to do with the fact they were raised by somebody. I listen, I know identical twins raised together yeah. who don't get along. Yeah, it happened. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I've got my, my two kids are, they're two years apart and they are, I mean, where they have their similarities, they're vastly different. They have the same mother and father. They've grown on the same method. And it's just like interests are different. How they approach problems are different. How they react to issues is different. And it's just, it's so funny. But you, you look at all siblings, they're like that too. You don't yeah. have two siblings that are identical to each other. That makes no sense. Even like you said, identical twin. Raised together. Siblings, raised together. No real difference. I mean, you know, environmentally, and their their brains yeah, just and and and, 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 work and, differently. and and what is interesting is that the I wrote the book in 2020 uh, called Truth and Empathy, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I I do have a, a YouTube channel where I'm trying to break down to explain that to people. Why I said uh, the book title was Truth and Empathy, and the Theta Ways uh, Meditation book is sort of an extension of that. So I took like some of them that sort of. Like, expanded to actually really explain sure. everything is truth has to do with the truth that you understand has to do with how slow and coherent your brain waves are in other words as your brain waves dominant brain waves slow down you're going to see a different reality okay so in other words we're not it's the lens changes yeah. like with a different lens same sort of like object you're going to see something different and empathy has to do if you're more left brain or right brain dominant so these are the two factors that are going to determine how a person is going to behave. Interesting. Regardless if, regardless if they're a male or female, whether their ethnicity, culture. That's why people, it's kind of because it, I live here in Toronto. It's very multicultural. People say, yeah. well, no, someone from, you know, you know, if someone from a different country. No, you have people who were, uh, you know, raised in a different continent, yeah. different like language, different food. They meet and they get along really well. You have identical twins raised together and they don't get along. I mean, if someone has to explain this to me, I don't. I yeah. I, it, like I said, they're it, on they're on the same wavelength apparently. Literally. So in other words, it always this uh, you no know, sexism, racism, and uh, listen, I'm telling you, if a person brings us the same, they are going to come to the same conclusion as you, regardless of of the the their life experience. And it's how you know also the core of a person has to do with their ethics and morals. Yes. So in other words, when I put you in a real situation, yes. Okay, and I say, okay, are you going to do the right thing or are you going to lie? Are you going to lie? This is when I know what you stand for. What is yeah. your level of truth that you have to stand for? Right. So when I say these, uh, let's say, identical twins ways together who don't get along, I'm talking about when I, when, actually, I didn't believe that first. When I saw these two individuals put in a real situation where they had all the same data and one did the exact opposite of the other. Wow.
and, and not, not for like one decision. I'm talking about something that will affect their life and they really knew what was going to happen. That's so crazy. when I, when I saw that, see, because you think it's well, at least the basic morals and, and vows should be t- the same. If you were like, the, you were born at the same time from the same yeah, mother, from, and you were raised together, you had the same food, you had the same nourishment, you should at least um, uh, agree on basic values and morals. Not true. So yeah. when I say, well, it, 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 science can do whatever they want, but when you see it in real life, you've got to explain this to me. Whereas yeah. you see people who were born in different centuries yeah. who were, who were they agree like to the T. So you realize that this has to do with levels of awareness. Your brain wave dominance will determine your values, your morals, how you see life it has nothing to do with who raised you. Because when you think about it, let's say if you uh, are raised by a parent who uh, is very different from you. Uh, when you're young, you don't know much. But mm-hmm. if let's say... I tell you, you know what? Uh, you see the wooden floor, my wooden floor. Okay. Yes. Okay. You see that if I, if you're young and I'm, your, I'm your parent, and I tell you, you know, this is not a wooden floor. You, if you're young, you don't have life experience. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe you're right. But then you come into my place and you touch the wood, and I tell you as a parent, this is not a wooden floor. Already you have a doubt. Then you go with, let's say, a, a, a like an. A, a hammer and, and some nails and you go and bang on it and you you, you take chips on the floor and and I, and me as a parent said well this is not a wooden floor already now you already have a doubt then you take a piece of that wood you go and analyze it <laughs> in the lab yeah and your parent keeps on telling you this is not a wooden floor at what point you're like, I don't think my parent knows what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That a lot of kids I found they are very, you know, they're very devout to their parents, which makes sense because they're raised. You're you're learning from the source of knowledge that you're fed, yes. and then as you get older, you learn that maybe they weren't exactly right on certain parts. Period. And it's just it's either it's either not by their fault. Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. It's just that that's what they were. That's the information they had at the time and they knew. And so they gave it to you because that's, that's nurture. That's, that's raising children. But I want to circle back to what you were talking about before with like the set, the physiology of it. I've been, I was learning some um, anthropology classes, long, took long anthropology classes, long, long, long time ago. And it was interesting to me, the biological anthropology, where you could take one person from one culture across one part of the world and snatch somebody completely opposite them on a different side of the world and you put their look at their biology together they're more close together than someone who's actually inside their own cultures yeah it, it's like it's just it's fascinating it's like so you're telling me that there's really no rhyme or reason to to how we are biologically created to connect each other in our own cultures we're we're just all a mass a cluster of nerves and and different undetermined things that that we have no control over nature can takes control over it well the thing is that so I, fascinating. I, and, and, and what why i try to connect that because uh I, do you know the the spiritual teacher uh david r hawkins uh uh-uh. okay david r hawkins he's a psychiatrist and uh, um spiritual he he passed away in 2012 and i came across his uh, book how versus force uh-huh. and uh in 2009 just around the time when i I, I saw these EG uh, yeah. readings and he said, listen, people are born at different levels of awareness of spiritual evolution. So you, you could be the the son or the daughter, but actually you would be adult compared to your, your, your parents. Yeah. So I've heard like, Oh, this person was born older. You yes. heard that term before? Yeah. So, so in other words, he was saying, listen, you are more and, you know, people can can have different points of view. But I, I, I've got to admit, I'm like, the more I see it, <laughs> it's kind of self-evident. Yeah. That people, like the the fact that you are the son of daughter of someone doesn't mean that your parents know more than you or right. understand more than you. Right. And, I mean, and something for you that is self-evident, for example, you want to tell me that love of these sages... In, in history, their parents were not enlightened people. 
Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe they so were how, the, the village yeah. idiot. You never know. It, 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 you know, the, how, how did they, they learn all this if their parents did not transmit that to the child? So it's not hereditary. So right. I think that there is, uh, then it goes back when we look at science, back to the spiritual aspect. So in his book, Power Versus Force, he says that a person's brain with dominance is directly linked to their spiritual evolution. Yeah. And it's not linked to your habitual parents. It yeah. has to do, you are more the person you were in your past life than, your, than who brought you in. And, yeah. and, and how I know this is like really interesting because when I look at even uh, healers, so a healer, you know, I know people, and I know that my book, if people read it and we really understand it, they should be shocked. <laughs> the thing is that when a person says, you know, I went and took a, a Reiki practitioner course and i'm a reiki master no a reiki master i have to look at how your brain is wired in other words you're not gonna heal buddha <laughs> that would be because, very interesting yeah because you don't, you, you, how is, no it, it, because you sort of read some books and the, no it has to do with how your brain is wired yeah a, a person will have a healing effect on another person mm -hmm. if they have more coherent brain with have a healthier brain than yeah. who they're healing yeah I mean, in other words, for me to have a healing effect on you, I have to be healthier than you. Yeah. Oh, That's that makes it. Sense. That makes That's sense. That's it. So in other words, if let's say I put, you know, I, I saw that in, because I took energy healing course at Transformational Arts College in Toronto, and they would just match anyone together. I'm like, no, it's not the way it works. I should, t I should check. Is your, are your brain waves more coherent than mine? Is your energy healthier more coherent in mind then you can do healing on me because <laughs> what happened is that and, and i've seen that a person does a healing technique on a person and yeah. the healer is being healed by the client <laughs> because the client is healthier than the healer well yeah if the person has more knowledge in the subject it doesn't necessarily make them a healthier person yes. i've seen plenty of unhealthy doctors who yes. know better but they're <laughs> maybe morbidly obese or have a terrible eating habits and don't work out and don't have fitness. Um, but I've also seen incredibly healthy people who've, who has, who have no idea how the body works. It's just their natural, you know, circadian rhythm, their natural sleep patterns. Yeah. They're just natural drive and interest in health and what yeah. makes them feel good. And they go to their instincts and it's just, it's yeah. interesting how that works. Yeah. You probably have heard of like the 10,000 hours of practice to, yes. to master. Okay, it's not true. Okay, let, 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 I mean, it's, it's you know, sometimes like they simplify. At least not for meditation. It's it does, okay. So, so yeah. So in other words, if you go to any class, I mean, most of your listeners probably have gone to like, you know, maybe elementary school, high school, even university. There's you a know. bell curve. Yes. In any class, okay, whether it's math, science or whatever, you're going to see there's 5% of the classroom who's clueless. Doesn't matter how many hours wrong. <laughs> you you put in there, how many times you explain the same, they are clueless. Um, yeah. Okay. Ten thousand hours won't even, you know, it would barely <laughs> scratch the surface. Barely constitution. And then you have 90% of people who, if you put enough time and effort, they're gonna improve and something oh, yeah. improve greatly. They can become very good at, at that subject. And then there's a 5% who've not even cracked open the book and ace it. I know. I I envy those people. Those people are insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the thing is that 5%, I think all, all of us uh, have, let's say for go to school, you have eight subjects. There are subjects where you work really hard and you can barely, you know, have the passing grade. Other subjects, you mm -hmm. barely flip through the book and you're like, you go there and you, you ace it. Okay. Yeah. It means that in terms of the bell curve, you're part of, like, for that subject, you're part of that top 5%. Yeah. Okay? Same yeah. thing with meditation. Yeah. There's 5% of people who, they could sit on that map forever, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to, like, you know, you're going to have, like, back pain. <laughs> Your butt's going to hurt. I already have back pain, so I don't need more back pain. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it's no amount of, of like, you know... uh calm videos and it's not gonna it's gonna help you then <laughs> you have 90 percent of people over time they go they're gonna improve 
Yeah. And then there's 5% of that population that I told that that student who had been meeting for three weeks, nothing earth shattering is going to happen in three weeks when you start a, any type of training. But it's just he natural. Did better, yeah. He did it better than the teacher has been doing for 35 years. That's he's hilarious. Of, that's, he's part of that 5%. So I don't know what he did. He doesn't even need it. He's a natural. He's a natural. natural at it. So, yeah. so these are, like, in other words, uh, uh, for to communicate with the, the public, people oversimplify. But if you actually sort of zoom in and we're like, okay, what in which context would they actually mean? That's the same thing. So it, when it comes to meditation, because most people have a beta brain dominance, so at best they probably re like if if they were at their optimal, they would their, their brain cycles would be around ten to twelve uh, cycles per second, sure. probably more twelve. Yeah. Then you add stress to it. So the average person breathes about 15 times a minute or 50 cycles per second if you look at their abdominal brain waves. And then when people are very stressed, they they're, they're end up like, like breathing 20 times in or more. And if you hyperventilate, it's really impossible to get into a meditative state. Actually, it's difficult to fall asleep. It's difficult to do anything <laughs> relaxing. If you, <laughs> you, you can't do it, I say, well, try it. Hyperventilate and try to fall asleep. It's not going to happen. It can't. I mean, you can't. It's interesting. I've heard of, um, have you heard of Wim Hof? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, my my um, trade teacher was talking about him and it was interesting. He was saying that, you know, you you slow your breathing down and just like what you're talking about and it will help you to relax. So it'll help you to calm yourself. And I was like, and, and, and get into that meditative state or even go to sleep. So there was one night I could not for the life of me calm down enough to go to sleep. I was just boink, I'm awake. And I needed to get to bed because I wake up really early in the morning. Yes. So I was like, let me just try this out. And so it was like, um, you know how he goes, he goes, you take a breath in and you just hold that breath for as long as you can until you can't take anymore. And then you breathe out and you breathe that out for as long as you can. And you just hold it. You're not taking any more oxygen in until you can't hold it. And then you breathe it in. So you're literally consciously slowing your breathing down as low as you possibly can. After about three minutes, I was out. Yeah, I was out. Oh, it, it was it, like... it's, it's, it's that powerful. Actually, there is a, a, a device called the dodo that uh, tells you to. There's a light uh, beam that beams in in the, the ceiling, so it's a it it and it beams at the rate of uh, six times a minute. Yeah. And you match your breathing to that light, uh -huh. and you're out within ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like between six. Yeah, so within ten minutes, you should be able to fall asleep because breathe, breathing is that powerful. And I saw that when I did age healing, I knew that a person uh, is healing based on how their breathing rate would change. So that would be an objective measurement. Okay, now you you're, you're heal or whatever. Or if yeah. let's say someone has uh, unresolved trauma, what I realized when I would do a healing on them, and that's maybe like let's say three percent maybe of people like where it's like you know trauma that's been like it's like you had like sexual abuse or something really sure. like, traumatic so i would the, the what happens is that their brain would actually increase it's almost like when the body is trying to uh work out a trauma the breathing increases and if they do let's say edge healing let's say for a week it goes back to their normal so when it goes back to their normal state it means that the trauma has been re released from the nervous system Wow. So the breathing would actually tell you exactly where you're at. And, and if actually you were to look at the brain waves, it means that the, the trauma has been removed and then now it goes back to normal. So ah. your body is talking to you. So it, the, the, the essence of the, the theta waves meditation technique is that what I've done is I've taken the standard like you know meditation video. So what you'll see is that it's like a sequence of you know calming pictures, like you know, yeah. of like, one is like raindrops, uh, so the rain. The other one is like a body of water, so like your stream sounds. And every 15 seconds or so four times a minute, because it's the, the rhythm of theta, there is a, a gentle sound of a bell, okay? So it's sort of like it sort of hypnotizes you. And I've embedded a theta brainwave frequency in the video. Interesting. So it's silent. So when a person watches it, their brain waves automatically slow down. Huh. So, so even if you were not trying to meditate, just by watching the video, it will do it automatically. I've always seen a pattern of people being next to water yes. and then calming down. I mean, like 
instantaneously. And I've noticed like my distance away from a body of water. I've always lived next to to water since I was young. And when I moved away to uh, basically the desert in uh, Washington state, I noticed myself more, I can't say pent up, but you get my picture. You get a little more, more pent, pent. Pent. as soon. I mean, as soon as I turned the corner to see the, the Puget Sound, I felt myself calm down, like release yeah. tension. Is there something with that? Like the, the water and meditation? Is there something? Uh, I, I, that? What, what I've noticed is that uh, water has a cleansing effect. So okay. in terms of energy, you'll see that, let's say if you, especially salt water, let's say if you go and swim in the ocean, you'll, yeah. you'll come back and it it releases, uh, because, you know, and people talk about, you know, let's say energy and it's like floating, you know, there's really a, a difference in terms of if I were to look at your brain, your, your nervous system, the, that frequency has been changed by that body of water. So I find that water has literally a cleansing effect. So being just around it, would actually have that or even people like walking bare feet grounding yeah like the earth itself like if, if you go into nature it literally has a, a like you know you can get like negative ions to your, your under your feet and people can try it is that like you, you'll see that like if i were to look at let's say your brain waves your breathing rate it probably would actually calm down and become more coherent because of the fact that nature has literally a calming effect on the body right so, so the uh, obviously with most of us, we living in in cities. It's difficult to to get to you know nature or even in terms of meditation. We people say people. I think most people know that they should do like chai chi yoga something, <laughs> but mm-hmm. to to take the time. Even if you carve the time, you say you know what? Okay, I'm gonna you know carve 15 minutes you know once a day or something to meditate. But it doesn't mean that you are gonna be able to meditate during that period. Yeah. So. So, so that's why when it comes to the meditation feature I've, I've created is that even if let's say you're not in the mood, even if you're like distracted, yeah, it has nothing to do because the that uh, that technology is is going to slow down your brain no matter what. It's like you plug it in, it's going to work. It's yeah. so you there's it removes that guessing game of like <sighs> I mean, some people will not necessarily feel it consciously. So for the skeptics, I say to them. If you have a device, because there are many devices nowadays, look at your, uh, let's say, uh, blood pressure or heart rate, whatever. I said, if you don't believe it, actually, these videos work, uh, measure your vital signs before, objectively. I'm yeah. not going to measure them because you might say, well, I'm fudging the numbers. <laughs> okay. Me- no, it's true. You know, I'm, you're selling a product. You know, yeah, yeah, it works. No, measure right. it yourself because it's a video, so you can do it at home. So measure your vital signs with an, a good you know, device. There are many on the, the market right now. Watch the video, then measure your vital signs again. Yeah. And see what happens. People are shocked. They're like, look at what and I say, do it at least three times. If you say, well, maybe there was one time it worked. No, no. Do it different. Let's say three three times, different times, and see the difference. And I say, don't even try to slow down. Don't try to slow down. It will it will do it automatically. And people always sort of like shocked because they're like, How is that impossible? Yes, because everything in like whatever you're looking at is actually has a frequency so if i uh, like uh, um expose whatever to, it actually will change the vibration of that object even though it in, in your eye for the five senses it's mm-hmm. still like the same bottle but no it has a different frequency so yep. the, and because of the fact that i've I've been meditating for a long period of time. I've seen the EEGs. I've done energy healing, and I, I've I learned how to record uh, human energy. And it, people think it's complicated. No, you just take any like good recorder and you put it next to like uh, let's say your hand. It will pick up the vibration, and I and you can re- load it up. So it takes five minutes. <laughs> oh wow! Wow! Yeah, it's, it's not like it's like a voice. Like do, do you need you know really advanced technology to record a voice? No. The same thing for fi- uh, frequency. The device that we have nowadays, because they're pretty good now, if you go like an iPhone, whatever, will wow. it will be really, really accurate. And this is who you are. This is information about who you are. And you can email it to someone. Like, you want to know who I am? Here it is. Here's that audio. 
Listen I to resonate it. at this many hertz. <laughs> yes, no, like literally, people want to send, and that's what the book. Uh, like, yes, I wrote Teta with Madish, but the first one was uh, the one 2020, 2020 was uh, Tooth and Empathy because mm-hmm. I said to people, your best romantic match is someone whose frequency is very similar to yours. Or your brainwaves are similar. That's it. People, when, when because we're hearing all these people, you know, let's say getting divorced. I'm like, I'll, I'll tell you why you got divorced. Irreconcilable differences. Your brains were not yes. alike. Because the yes. only way you don't have a, a, an issue or disagree with someone is if you don't see the same, the, the, the reality the same way. You, right. you don't, you, it's impossible to argue with someone who really agrees with you. Yeah, make sure, you know, <laughs> less than... I mean, it to be an interesting conversation. You can't. Yeah. You, you can't. I mean, if, if you but, truly uh, agree kind of, with what I'm conflict. saying, you, yeah. you cannot have a conflict if you truly agree. No, you're not pretending. You truly agree with what I'm saying. Right. You cannot have a fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot harder. It's a lot harder. Yeah. You can't. So, so, so people say, oh, I don't know what happened to me. Whenever people come to me and they say, like, you know, uh, I've got this relationship issue. I say, listen, I'm, I'll tell you what the issue is. I don't know the, the details. You don't see things the same way. Yeah. And that's very hard too. And like I said, it's, it's kind of hardwired. It's a part of who they are. It's how they, how they think, how they are, how they resonate. And it's, it, it's hard to change that. It's impossible to change that really. Oh, you, you know what I mean? So I say people like, you know, uh, know yourself. So yeah. you know your brain type. Yeah. Okay. Have a good self-knowledge and who's your, your best match yourself. So, so I want to talk about brain types. I, I locked on your, uh, on your cover. It said 16 brain types. Yes. Where, what are some of the brain types and how do you know which one you are? Actually, it's based on the uh, MBTI personality type. So if you know your brainwave dominance, let's say yeah. someone brain dominance is like 12 hertz so in other words uh at 12 cycles per second would be like a beta yeah. then you there's there are tables in the book where and, and you know let's say oh well i am let's say a left brain dominant and my dominant brain is 12 uh, cycles per second you go in that table and it will tell you your personality type oh, okay th- that the the brain the brain of dominance will tell you if you are a sensor versus an intuitive it will tell you if you are an introvert or extrovert. I it will tell you that one. <laughs> it, you, you, you will tell it will tell you also if you are your organizational style. Are you the type to be orderly or are you the type to be the spontaneous type? So that brainwave dominance will tell you all that. Wow. The only thing that so far Windham does did not point out it has to do with whether or not you are left brain dominant or right brain dominant. But with that's the only aspect. Everything else, but most people know if they're more empathetic or more uh, sort of logical. So are you more the type to put emphasis on ethics and morals or are you more uh, put more emphasis on logic when you make a decision? And, mm-hmm. and, and it comes also in terms of that energy. Some people come up are more gentle or softer. And yeah. I think the, the, um, the illusion that people say, well, men are a certain way and women are a certain way. No, it's just that the... The nope. percentage of women who are more empathetic is higher than mm-hmm. men, but it's not what it is. Because when you think about it, let's say if you look at a, a number of uh, men in, in the world, you can clearly say they're more empathetic or or as empathetic as a woman. You know what I mean? So, and and you have some men, women who are as lo- like logical as men. For example, oh, yeah. Margaret Thatcher. You know, as you know, and you remember the, this, uh, she was a prime minister in, in years ago. Uh, well, she's clearly a masculine energy. You know, if, if you if you have like your, your heart was broken or, you know, you feel you need emotional support, you're not going to call Margaret. You know what I mean? You know, she's, she's no. going to be there to, to cuddle you and, and give you emotional. No. And, and as people, that that is the acid test. You know, who are you going to go to for a broken heart? Mm-hmm. To, to empathize with you this if you feel is he drawn to someone it's because this person is more right brain dominant so in other right. words you, you're probably more going to call oprah than you're going to call <laughs> donald trump for emotional support if you, yeah. you have a hard look at, would that be correct i mean when i say that it's so self-evident that it's kind of like you know you're you're, you're insulting our intelligence but I'm like you know it's like people think that it's more comp- no, it's not that as complicated as you you may think yeah. and what happens is that it has to do with, I would say, the 80-20 rule. 
No oh, one yeah. is like a hundred percent. So in other words, you're not a machine. You're not like a hundred percent of the time empathetic or hundred percent logical. But no. it, w- let's say if you were to do that behavior eighty percent of the time, would it increase your energy or would you feel drained? A person who is more logical, if they have to use their empathy to make decisions, they feel tired. They feel drained. Mm-hmm. Like you know what? I- I'm not being myself. A person, and the same thing. If someone is very empathetic, and you say, you know, we have to use only logic to make a decision. So basically, the object oriented look at people almost like objects they will feel during they feel like off they, they, they will over time they will start having psychosomatic you know issues i'm gonna have this headache all the time i get because you're not following your nature huh okay well I can't remind, yeah well that's what that's what i usually that's how i describe introvert and extrovert so yes. like for instance my wife's an extrovert i'm an introvert and it has nothing to do with how we interact with people it's the energy that we feel afterwards so her and i both teach she teaches and she is empowered and draws the energy from all the little people she works with she works with kindergartners and but she can just run on that high yes all day all yes. day i will teach for 3 4 hours i'm exhausted I'm absolutely exhausted. Not like I any put anything out, but I am just holy cow, my my tank's empty. And I have to be by myself for a length of time before I feel like I could do it again. Now I've pushed yes. through and done more, but yes. that's why doing public school for me just wasn't gonna work because yeah, it, it was it was just I was around so many people so many times, like I got I gotta have some me time. <laughs> before I can yes, reach yeah. myself back. So that I see people your energy level is a good guide. Yeah, if, if you know you're in the right like job or right relationship, when being there increases your energy, and yeah. your body will tell you. You know, if you keep on doing something that drains you, yeah. you know you, you're gonna get sick. Like yes. if let's say you put an, an extrovert in a in like alone in a room. Actually, most people are extroverts, so introverts mm. are more the smaller population, and. Uh, COVID was a, a prime example, you know, during the pandemic, it people were, were extrovert just whittled away. Whereas yes. introverts are like, we were like, yes, baby. I was like, people told me like, literally, I blossomed during the the the, uh, the, uh, the pandemic. I was I like, a lot the pandemic. I, I, I love this. I mean, I said to myself, like, I don't have to spend a time with people. It's, it's not to do with like being, uh, let's say, having social anxiety or not having people's skills. BS. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not shy. But yeah. I am clearly an introvert. Like I, I just like I feel so much better. My mind is clearer. I'm I, I'm I'm Isn't able to do weird? so much more work. I love. Like I mean, for me, it's to, so weird. Like it, it, in other words, um, and it, it's it's from birth. I mean, it, it's not something that you sort of work on. It's like you wired that it's, way. Yeah. It, for, for me, like it, for most people, uh, solitary confinement is a punishment. In other words, that's what they in prison. For an introvert, it's actually a blessing. You're like, mm-hmm. if, you to, if yes. a judge wanted to punish an introvert, put them in a room with lots of people all the time. That's right. that's a punishment for an introvert. All it's the, the time. opposite. Yeah, all the time, like like nonstop. There's always someone yakking away. Yep. <laughs> and all that, the time. And, and a, a crowd of people, loud music. When I describe that, don't you find already like, oh my god, I feel like, oh my god, like, and people well, in in your face all the time. That there's not a break. There's not time to think. Like this is hell for an introvert. It is, and then the older I get, the more I want to not be around large groups for a long period of time. Like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, having you know, birthday parties, for instance. Yeah, yeah. I turned, I turned thirty, and we were like, oh yeah, let's do a party because you know the milestone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> I found that when the party was closing in, I was just dreading it. And then it happened and I was so glad it was over. Yes. Well, I had my siblings over and the four of us just BS and talked with, you know, with my wife there and the kids. And that was fine because that was people I had grown up with. I mean, literally, you know, grown up with or grown into. Yes. And I was fine. But when it was a huge and massive people, even though people I know, they're friends and family. Yes. It's like, I want you all to leave because I'm, <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. It's not that I'm, I don't like these people. I love these people, but it's just, I'm exhausted. I, I know. I want- it's, 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 it's like, you, I find with um, uh, introverts, I, we do best, let's say with maybe one person, especially if we're really close and we had like 
we, we there's a lot of substance and in, in the relationship there's there's depth like being with one person you can tune in you can like take one subject and go deep like yeah. that's fulfilling yes. you could have another person because the thing is that with the bigger the crowd the more diluted the message mm-hmm. so if let's say you, you want to appeal to a wide group of people you say nothing at some point you're like oh hi how are you i mean you know what i mean like you <laughs> to adapt to everyone who's present yeah. and i find that introverts need more depth than extroverts extroverts need more entertainment something that's you know fun and but introverts at some point there's there's so much there's just so much fluff you can tolerate before oh you know, I, 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 I need substance here like you're not saying anything i need so, legitimate substance yes yeah, i, have, so I words, have that same problem you know so in other words it, to, to, that's why i find that talking to one person where you can really take a subject and cut it or 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 adjust it to that person mm-hmm. makes it a lot more fulfilling for an yeah. introvert in yes. other words, you you can uh, adjust your language, the depth, uh, yeah. the breath, everything to that person. And because of that, the interactions are a lot more fulfilling, nourishing for both people. And when you go, like leave, you're not tired because you say, yeah. well, I was able to really connect with this person yes. at a deep level. And But it's not like with extroverts. And what happens is that I would say that three quarters of people are extroverts compared to introverts. That also, and that is based on your brain wave dominance. So if it's mm-hmm. a, if a person just enough, it has its sensor as a brain wave dominance of 12 cycles per second, they are introverts. If the person has a brain dominance of 14 cycles per second, they're extroverts. Right. That two cycles per second difference makes you either introvert versus extrovert. Wow. Wow. So, so it's, it's very precise. And I was like, you know, and, and that is linked to uh, the Myers-Briggs personality type. So in other words, I, in the book, I have tables that show that, uh, uh, you know, gives you exactly your brainwave dominance and who you are. And 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 the 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 resting breathing rate is an indication of whether or not you're stressed or not. So yeah. it's good to actually know what it is, so you can like say, so am I really stressed or I'm just imagining? Well, you can actually measure it, and you can say, oh yes, I'm stressed or not, and how to re- to correct it. Because most people say, oh, I think I am. No, your body can. You know, there are measurements, just like your your blood pressure, there's a blood glucose, there are different things that you can, that your body's speaking to you. So right. this book is about that. And the Theta Brainwave Method, the technique, which is like I told you, it's, it's meditation videos, corrects your resting breathing rate to its optimal automatically. Oh, man. It okay. does it. And then you know what is the right one. And, and I said, but you don't have to do it like every day. So it's like once or twice, like once or twice a week that you oh, need okay. to do that because it's pretty powerful because it's, it's a, it's a healing, it's a cleansing and it's, it it's a correct. <laughs> so, so you watch it. If you feel stressed, whatever you watch the video, it's, there's a the 10 minute video, there's a 20 minute video. And I usually recommend for a 20 minute session, you do that. It corrects it. And people are like always surprised. Like, Oh my God, I feel so good. Yeah. And you can do it. Eyes open. You cannot do it. Eyes closed. If it you do it, eyes closed, then you, you get a better effect because obviously, you, you're getting to deeper right. than the CC because if your eyes are open, then you have uh, visual stimulation and yeah. it makes your brain waves go faster. So if yeah. you close your eyes, you are in a, in a quiet room. You do it like once every three days or so because people are busy as well. Mm-hmm. So, so that helps you correct. And also it helps you understand your own body. So you will know, okay, that's how I should be feeling. This yeah. is my optimal. So when you do that off enough times, you'll be able to know even in the day-to-day life, okay, no, I think I'm stressed. I need to start breathing through the nose. So I put a quite of emphasis on breathing through the nose. And in the book, I do explain the first chapter, the importance of proper breathing. Most people don't understand. I put like the first chapter in both books, uh, but obviously the Theta Ways Meditation has to do with understanding the importance of breathing for overall health. Yes. So in other words, most people hyperventilate through the mouth and that is actually related to whether or not a person who has proper jaw development. So what you'll see is that a person who breathes mostly through the mouth, their tongue is a wrong position. The tongue should be on the roof of your mouth. If it's there, your jaw actually develops normally and you have space for 32 straight teeth. About easily 85% of, of adults don't have space for 32 straight teeth. 
Yeah. Which means that the tongue is in the wrong position. How you know if this is not normal? Because if you look at nature, you don't see 80% of crocodiles with crooked teeth. There's not an orthodontist in the wild putting braces on animals. How, how, how funny how, would that would be, just by the way? How yeah. yeah. So, so, so in other words, you, you realize that this is not the proper design for Mother Nature. And how I, I, I know that, for example, in my case, I have space for 34 straight teeth. Okay, I've got even two guys. So in other words, and how I know that my tongue was in the right position because, like, even when I was go to the dentist, like, oh my god, how come your jaws like, yeah, because I'm a nose breather. If you're a nose breather, your tongue, no one tells you. No. Like, and, and, and you know, I didn't know people did not put their their tongue on the roof of their mouth because I already did it automatically. <laughs> if you are a nose breather, you're gonna do it automatically. No one. There was not a press conference for all the animals in the wild saying that you know what. You know, to put your tongue in the roof of your mouth. How come all the animals knew how to do it? Because they're nose breathers. They're nose breathers. The, the nose is supposed to use it for breathing. So <laughs> all this to say is that the, um, yes, I, I created these videos, but there's a lot of science behind it. So I would That's recommend cool. people to to uh, read the book by Jim Nestor. Again, um, Breath, the New Science of a Lost Art. Uh, the other book also is by Patrick McEwen. He's uh, yeah, and um, I, and I can always give you the, the information. He sure. he, he, uh, he wrote the book uh, The Oxygen Advantage. Also talks about it because there's a buteco technique that he teaches, and buteco was a doctor in 1950s in the Eastern European. Um, he's uh, from he's a Korean, if I'm not mistaken, and he has linked how breathing is directly linked to so many chronic illnesses, from like high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, people who have like cravings for processed foods, all that linked to hyperventilation. People don't understand the impact it has it will determine how you're going to live it's going to determine also like he linked it even with like an instance of cancer you see all people um if because cancer is um, actually there there is a book just recently there's um um and i can also, I can also send you the information is that the the if you look at cancer it is very much linked to how well the mitochondria works so yeah. your mitochondria is where your body produces energy using oxygen so your body needs oxygen to produce energy and the in the cell is the mitochondria who needs oxygen to produce energy. So if let's say it's not available, your your mitochondria has to use sugar to produce energy. Yes. So well, in other words, you'll see like processed foods uh, is usually has a lot of sugar. So you're feeding your your the cancer if you don't have sugar. So you'll see that wow. uh, that's why processed food is is not as the uh, well, I mean, there could be elements of it that can, uh, you know, pr you know, cause cancer. But yeah. the other aspect is the fact that you are giving the 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 cell sugar, processed food, so that it, the cancer has the raw material to actually grow faster. So yeah. people say, oh, it's only like you know, sitting and and, and meditate. There's so much science behind it. And and what I try to do because I I don't like books that are like really long. First of all, people don't read them. We're we're, we're killing trees. OK, <laughs> get to the point. So <laughs> I, I write short books, cool. get like three to four chapters. Every word counts. Yes. Like I said, well, if you, you don't read one sentence, you won't understand the next sentence. Everything has been very, you know, <laughs> like every word, read it. Methodical, <laughs> very methodical. Methodical. This yes. book, A Theta Ways Meditation, um, because it's going to be on Amazon. Cool. Is, you you're going to see that it is three chapters uh, awesome. get to the point and and there's a, a calendar there so you can actually write down let's say your your like let's say your, your meditation practice like how what you experience so forth uh there's also my website uh thetawaysmeditation.com and also my youtube channel practical spirituality um because I, there's like 230 some uh, videos and oh i gosh. break it break down like you look at different personality types i break it down like piece by piece and how should i say okay well if you have this brain type and you marry someone with this brain type what's going to happen what are <laughs> going to be your like literally i, I predict you it's funny because people leave comments who actually were that brain type and had that combination they're like oh my god how come you nailed it <laughs> You nailed it right on the head. So I said, like, it's, it's, it's predictable. You know, if you're one plus one equals to two, you know, yeah. this is what Mother Nature, you, it, one plus one doesn't equal to four. You know what I mean? Not usually. So, not usually. <laughs> not so without some weirdness happening. 
So in other words, it's 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 not by accident that you have some childhood issues because it's predictable based on your brain type, your level of awareness, your you, you have certain preferences. If you're you're an introvert or extrovert, it it it's not as random as people make me think. So all all this to say, it is something that I trust that people are going to use because the other aspect also be before we uh, we we, uh, we wrap it up <laughs> is that because i worked as a health coach what i've realized that people use substance to medicate themselves because your brain dominance will also determine whether or not you're more or less likely to have mental health issues so i i read the study and i think it's pretty true that at any given point in north america about 83 percent of adults have a mental health issue Mm-hmm. In other words, you're more likely to, like at any good point, to see someone with a mental health issue than having the flu. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. In, in other words, yeah, mental health issues are more common than the flu at any that's given insane. point. Because because you don't see 80% of people walking one with a, you know, a, a stuffy nose at any <laughs> given point. Is that right? Even in a lot, the lot winter, harder to identify. That's for sure. Even even during the pandemic, it was not like that. So in other no. words, it, the, so there is a, a link directly between your resting breathing weight, your your brain weight dominance, and mental health issues. So wow. this is this this is serious. So I said, well, I know that's my own book. You need to read it. <laughs> so there's some urgency there, guys. Go get her book. Check it out. It's on Amazon and your website. And it's, what is your uh, which website? My website is Teta Waves, Teta uh, uh, hyphen Waves Meditation dot com. So okay. it's the the title of the book. So Teta, the, the you know the, the alpha, uh, yep. you know Teta, that the the that, that frequency hyphen Waves with an S Meditation dot com. Excellent. Okay. Well, great. We probably could talk for an hour or so, but I know you got know. <laughs> you've got things you got to do. So, Junal, this has been very, very in- insightful. Let's just say that right now. I've yeah. learned a lot in the last little over an hour. So, thank you for <laughs> for coming on here and hanging out with me for a little bit. So, I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. <laughs> it was lovely talking to you. Yes, you too. And if you ever want to do some more um, uh, interviews, we can definitely arrange that in the future. I love reconnecting with other uh, authors and chatting again. So, yes, uh, welcome. Awesome. All right, guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. Go get her book. Check it out. Do some deep breathing through your nose. Do some meditation. It'll help you overall in your health. All right, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And as always, stay mighty and keep reading. Are you an author? Do you know someone who is? If so, then message me, Ryan Oliver, at ryanmoliver.com to set up a free appointment to discuss being showcased on the Mighty Books Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to the Mighty Books YouTube channel and share the link to this and more episodes with your friends and family. Thanks for listening. So long for now. Stay mighty and keep reading.